Hey YouTube, it's GV Lone Guy, September 24th, 2012, and I've been doing a lot of thinking since it was roughly a year ago that we were all in a frenzy expecting that the Lord was going to return any second to rapture the church. Um, I took away something fairly significant from that period of time, this eclipse uh, pattern chart uh, that indicates these uh, moon, uh, the blood moons and the eclipse patterns. This chart here also indicates that this pattern of the uh, tetrads, the lunar tetrads, only occur in the last, let's see, this is 2200 years from from zero to the year 2200, and it only has occurred these handful of times. Seven times so far, the the eighth one would be right here. So there's a lot of uh, speculation as to how these had to do with the signs and it's all pretty clear if you go back and review those videos. My question is if that is in fact the case then what's to say we're not already in the seven year tribulation period? What's to say we're not already in this period? Well the answer to that question is People believe that we have to see a agreement made with Israel first, the Antichrist making a treaty with Israel that will ultimately be broken in the middle of the seven years. Well, I'd like to suggest that how do we know that didn't happen? There was a meeting, in fact, with uh, Israel and the United States, Obama, back on this date in September of last year. So what's to say there wasn't a secret agreement made? I know there's been other secret agreements in the past with Israel that we didn't find out about until almost a year later, but it's possible that this is actually taking place and that whatever promise was made, you know, we haven't heard a whole lot in the news about the Palestinian issue lately. Just wondering if there's been an agreement made Perhaps it was a seven-year agreement. Perhaps it was an agreement as to when the transition uh, should take place or the building of the temple or these types of things. Who knows? All I know is the spot is available for them to build a temple without destroying the temple that's located on the Temple Mount. There's some questionable areas that might be the original site of the original temple that as far as I think they're considering that as a possible building site. So this thing could go up in a big hurry. They have apparently all the materials cut and ready to go. So it's a matter of assembling the temple in sort of a kit format. Once they get the go-ahead to do this on the land, maybe they've already received the go-ahead in secret. Maybe that's why things are quieted down. Not really sure, but all I know is that these patterns do not just randomly repeat themselves. Not very often. These, these, as you can see, these tetrads are not going to happen again in the foreseeable future. This goes all the way out another hundred years. So let me zoom in on this a little bit and let's take a quick look at it. Here's the area we're talking about right here, 2014, 2015. That would be the middle of the seven year tribulation if the seven years started in September of 2011 and ending in 2018 and so on. You can watch the video. I'll link some videos below so you can get the idea on how all these things relate. Starting all the way back at the beginning, the very first one that took place all the way coming up here to the present. So this is information worthwhile, I think, in at least consideration. I'm going to leave it right there and let you guys do some further research on the subject. And I noticed in the year 2014 and in the year 2015, there were four total blood moons in a row, back to back, with no partial lunar eclipses in between. And the website said that the government calls this a tetrad, when you have four blood moons back to back with no partial 
a lunar eclipses in the middle. And so my first thought was, well, how often does this happen? What's the math? What's the probability of having this? Well, when I had looked, there weren't any at all in the 1800s. There were none in the 1700s. There were none in the 1600s. And last century, there happened to be two, but there's two things. First off, how often are there four blood moons in a row? Then the other question is, how often are there four, four blood moons that fall on the set times, on the feast days? But when I went to 2014 and 2015, I looked at this, I just saw the normal Gregorian calendar dates, and I thought, I didn't see anything. And then all of a sudden, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I got to look at it on the biblical calendar. And so what I did, I converted it to where that falls on the biblical calendar, and I found out they fell on the first day of Passover, and then the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles in 2014, and, tw and then in 2015, it was the same thing. It fell on the first day of Passover and the first day of Tabernacles in 2015. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is incredible to have the four blood moons falling back to back which is rare, and even rarer yet, on the feast days. And the last time it occurred was, look at the, the slide here, it was in 1967 when Israel captured Jerusalem in 1968. They not only were tetras, they fell on Passover and Sukkot, Passover and Sukkot. So I thought, this is crazy. When does the next time it appear? Well, it happened also last century, guess what? Right after they became a nation in 48. They happened in 1949 and 1950. And so here's like, oh my goodness, this is tied to Israel, and these are the signs in the heavens on the feast day, so God is sending us signals. Don't let this cause fear in your heart, in your mind. Surrender yourself to Yesu today. 